apps like ours could actually form a basis for civic contribution. Um, they could allow for free information data load, a link from the citizen to the city, um, provide easy and immediate feedback to the city. And I got a great example of that coming up. There's a website here called ParkScan that's been incredibly helpful to us parents and it was developed by the city of San Francisco. So um, this is um, an example from Mom Maps of the evolution of a particular play area. When I first built Mom Maps, I was thinking of this static app that would, I would just download a lot of parks to and um, kind of be done with it. But as with um, a lot of open data, this kind of um, location-based data is actually an active and alive thing that changes daily. Um, or not daily, but often. So um, there's a possibility for this data to actually become alive, dynamic, and more meaningful um, with apps like ours. Here's um, an example from one of the play areas. So um, it started out as a nice area, play area. I mean, it is a nice play area. And here's a nanny in San Francisco that made a comment about the basics of it. Um, you know, it's shady, good for toddlers, preschoolers, and that certain times of day there's some, you know, um, big daycare places so that, you know, you know it's crowded sometimes. Then as you move up, you see a timeline um, where the park gets worse. You know, there's comments that, oh, it's maybe not so great. And then we started to hear from mom forums that say, hey, this, this place is dirty, you've got some aggressive squirrels, um, and we, you know, it's broken swings, bad stuff for parents, right? So um, I went in and I, I, I brought the rating down and then coincident with this, um, me and the other mom mappers, so to speak, started Twittering about this and about park scan and how you can make your parks better. And I'll show you in a minute, we've, we sent a bunch of um, requests out. It actually wasn't me, but more, more the moms that we were Twittering to and the park improved. So now it's back to its original state and I took a picture of it so that moms could see that, that their input to the city made a difference. So here's a park scan website. It, it started out as the Neighborhood Council for Parks, but it has a feedback loop to the city that will allow the city to make improvements to the park if they get a complaint. And um, here's the timeline for this particular park. And we, we started doing the social media activity in, in November and um, October, and you can see there was like five complaints of a similar nature, and they were addressed. And then the park restored back to normal and didn't get another um, complaint for nine months. And I think this is a really great um, example of how city data can be a dynamic thing that contributes not only to the um, city, but also to the, the citizens that live in the city. And then it can be a two-way street. So this was a great example of what open data can do for civic action. I think open data can be a very powerful tool and um, San Francisco is a great leader in this arena. Um, apps can also help facilitate this kind of um, interaction with the citizenship. So what do I see as the future of open data? Um, I think it would be super if all the data were organized in one place. So that means park data, playground data, police data, hospital data, all the data that parents need, and well, that's my interest, but that the citizens need, you know, service data, be all listed in one place so we can easily find it. Um, embedded URLs help a lot. Like I, for, as an app developer, I only have a limited amount of space on my iPhone. So I don't need to have a lot of detail, but I need to be able to tell my users where to go to find detail. So um, this is an example of um, a, a municipal site that I'm currently pulling from. And as you can see, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, it just has the locations, the address, and it has a URL where users can go to to find more information. And then lat long data, which G, uh, the GPS coordinates that we need to find the location-based data. This is all we need for app, as app developers, is a, a, a live data set that gives us directed data. And this is um, 
an example of like what kind of URL you could direct to. So my app could provide the basics and then users could go to the website and get pictures, hours, things like that that parents might need or might not need. They can always be redirected. All the smart home phones have browsers on them now. So it's an easy way to access detailed data. Just um, give us a URL to go to. So um, the recommendations for future use, again, expand the data set. And um, part of that could include um, bringing the departments together. So like I said before in my, in my previous slide, I gathered the park data from both the open source database and from the Neighborhood Parks Council. There's also some other great city sites like sfkids.org that have amazing data for families. So um, if there was a way to pull out together all the resources for us app developers, that would be terrific. Add detail or point to a URL with detail. Allow programmers APIs to access it. APIs are um, a great tool and they allow for easy access to all this stuff. And um, lastly, but not leastly, create a feedback path so that citizens and app developers can contribute to the, the existing open data. Um, it could be social media, Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, sites that have commentary. Um, use the parks and rec um, tools that are already available. And maybe even possibly do a two-way API so that us app developers can contribute to you and it can be a two-way street. And then, of course, periodically update the database to correct errors and, and continually add new data. The more I work with this kind of data, the more I'm fascinated about how it's not just one static da data set. It's a, actually a living thing that is continually evolving over time. So if we treat it that way, I think it could become a very interesting, powerful resource. So. Last but not least, the open data could be very powerful if we enable our citizens with this. Um, keep updating and improving the data. Use APIs whenever you can because it makes life easier for um, developers to access the data. And then find ways for citizens and app developers to contribute. So that's it.